Okay. Right, folks, uh, you're on Radio FM 88 Australia, and um, nothing surprises me better than on a Thursday night, which is a Thursday morning over there in the UK, to have um, Andrina <coughs> speak to two fantastic females who are into natural health solutions, and that's the show tonight. So um, without any further ado, Andrina, let's hand it over to you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dream in the New Dream. And today is the 15th of 2nd, 2024. So happy Valentine's for yesterday for those lovely ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, maybe. Um, right. You know that I'm passionate about health and I love anything to do with health. And there's many levels to do with health. And I know when you don't feel well, um, and you, you know, it's all about listening to your body and or finding the right um, practitioner who can help you. And like I always say, you cannot go into a health shop and buy 20 pounds worth of health. So we've got two lovely ladies here today. We've got Esther Thomas and Jackie Ludwig. So welcome both of you. And it's a pleasure to have you on the show. And, nice to be here. <laughs> and I know like between you, you've got many, many, many years of experience of um, health. And I know um, Esther is the proud owner of Olia Holistic Care. Um, mm -hmm. And you've got an interesting story because Jackie worked first before you came along and you've bought the business and and now you're growing and glowing. So without further ado, um, who would like to start first? Because um, I know we've talked about, so who would like to start the journey first? Jackie. Sure, I'll jump in first if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, um, no, that's fine. So, Andrina, welcome. thanks, Andrina. Yeah, first of all, it would be lovely if you could go in and buy twenty pounds of health. Wouldn't that be simple? <laughs> Wouldn't be as just. interesting, though. But certainly, do agree you're right. So, um, I just wanted to give you a bit of a rundown as we're having a chat this evening and starting to talk about all things natural health about what brought me into it. Um, obviously, it's something that you are drawn to and would like mm. to do. So it's something I grew up with in my family, always using natural health solutions as first line options and using them for health. So it's pretty natural for me. I didn't start down this path. I began at university studying um, other degrees, um, beginning, beginning another degree, found it a little bit boring and began to do a summer school subject on the side in massage, which I loved, found my way to help people. And that led me into, instead of going straight into massage, into naturopathy. So uh, from there, I haven't looked back, <laughs> didn't complete the other degrees. So I haven't looked back completing a Bachelor of Health Science in, natural, in naturopathy and then going on to upgrade to a diploma in remedial massage as well. So my journey has been mostly in Brisbane, um, just local, fairly local here, traveling to different areas of Brisbane, um, working in a variety of different setups, um, health food store, um, clinic situations, as well as chiropractic clinics, and now a multi-modality clinic here in Springwood in Brisbane, Australia. So I must say I've had the pleasure of working alongside a number of different practitioners from chiropractors, other naturopaths, acupuncturists, iridologists along the way. And really I have learned a lot from working with those people as well as from the people that I've seen. I find that that's probably the biggest thing is meeting the amazing people that I see on a day-to-day -day basis in clinic as well. Um, everyone has an amazing story really <laughs> and with where they've come everyone who I see in natural health is interested in looking after their health and taking responsibility for their health which is really great and aligns with what we do and what we want to do so it just really makes you want to help people in whatever way you can mm -hmm. so keeping it with all the information and knowledge is just our way of being able to help people find mm -hmm. what they need then along the way. So I've had natural medicine has helped a number of my family members through things from um, nervous breakdowns back in the days when nothing was there to be done about it to um, back, we're talking um, mid-1900s there, so from way back in the family to my own personal journey with um, skin disorders that 
couldn't be resolved through medicine. But um, and at first I couldn't resolve it myself with naturopathy, but through working with and seeing other naturopaths along my journey as well. Um, managed to resolve it quite quickly in the end when we worked out what it was. <laughs> so it's been a pleasure to be able to pass that on and help other people with things like that on their journey as well. So I've been here at Olea Health for a number of years and um, very recently I've met Esther along that journey and we began to work together um, just last year. So it's been fairly short, but I think we get along well, we work along the same lines and it's been a pleasure getting to know her and working with her. So yeah. I might quickly jump over and let Esther tell you her story of how she got to be here too before yeah. we start to talk about more what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, Jackie. That's lovely. Okay, well, welcome, Esther. I'm looking forward to hearing yeah. how you started your journey. <laughs> well, my journey is probably a little bit longer, um, but um, I guess for me, where it started was um, when I was 14, I went from um, being age champion at school, really sporty, really fit, to all of a sudden not being able to get out of bed. Um, I, and I had in, uh, significant fatigue and um, at that time uh, fatigue wasn't really, chronic fatigue wasn't really super recognised as a thing um, and so I really struggled um, with going from like sport being my favourite subject and all of those things at school to um, really struggling in my health and um, I went to the doctors and they did some blood tests on me and basically couldn't find anything in my blood tests and um, just kind of labelled it as um, it's teenage, you know, she's just a teenager um, and a um, bit of laziness and all of those things, which obviously for me wasn't a good enough answer um, because for me and for my whole family, they could see such a massive change in my health and um so then i just started googling some things diet lifestyle i started to make a few changes in my diet and um and then a few years later so that so that really helped me and i was able to go back to school but wasn't a hundred percent and um then i started to see a naturopath myself and i'd actually i didn't even know what a naturopath was at the time and pretty much as soon as i went I felt so heard um, and so validated that my symptoms weren't normal and um, that there were things that you could do about it. Um, at the at the time, I think doing my research as a teenager, I pretty much self-diagnosed myself with chronic fatigue syndrome because I was like, well, all of my symptoms are lining up with this. Um, and then many years later, the doctors ended up diagnosing me with that. Um, which I, of course, already knew that that's what I had. But um, but then working with a naturopath, just there were so many light bulbs going off in my mind. And I was like, wow, these things were not being taught. How come we don't know about these things? Um, and so I just grew my passion. And, um, and then after I finished school, I, I worked in community services work and worked with primary age children, supporting them at school, um, which I really loved. And, and I thought that I would be in that community services space for a while. Um, but then I just kept on finding myself researching more natural things. I found myself, you know, making um, water kefir and fermented things at home and, and just really getting into it more. And um, and so basically I, um, I kind of one day prayed, to be honest, God, is this what I'm supposed to do? Or is this just um, a, a, like a passion? And actually that night I had a really significant dream um, that really confirmed to me that that was what I was meant to do. Um, and then I got offered a position to work in a naturopathic clinic as a receptionist, which kind of came out of the blue and I wasn't expecting it. Um, and it was on the exact days that I could do it and everything just lined up. <laughs> And it was just so clear that that was what I was meant to do. So I ended up studying um, a degree in um, natural, uh, it's a Bachelor of Health Science specializing in naturopathy. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so now here we are. And um, uh, yeah, really enjoying um, running Aaliyah Health and um, 
loving the challenge of working with patients with lots of complex health conditions. Um, yeah, that's our little clinic there. So um, it's a beautiful little um, calm and relaxing space. And um, yeah, so that's kind of my journey of how I've come to where I am now. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> um, so do you like, to, would have you like to share about naturopathy? What, you know, what is it all about for people that don't know? You can go for it, Jackie. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, let me know if I get too carried away here. <laughs> but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> With naturopathy, what we aim to do is we're just really looking to support the body, support the body's natural healing mechanisms, the ability of the body to be well, to be in balance. Our bodies are designed and they are built to, to heal. They're built to be well. They're built to keep going. Um, there's sometimes we push our bodies too far if we're not listening to our bodies in certain ways. Um, a little bit like what Esther was talking about. We've all probably experienced it at times, maybe a number of different times in different ways, um, when we don't know things and we're not aware of and we just keep pushing through in a certain direction um, when we needed to rest or when we needed to adjust our nutrition or when we needed to change something or support a different system in our body. Our body will adapt, it will cope, it will keep going, but it doesn't mean it goes well <laughs> because everything is so intricately linked and it's just so dynamic and so complex. Um, having come from the background with the Bachelor of Health Science, I think we tend to be a little bit of um, biochemistry nerds in that sense of understanding how it all works. Um, with the different feedback systems and loops and things like that and how it all really affects each other. Um, so we um, look to just support those different areas and we um, try to find get the body back to balance and back to that homeostasis that it's always looking for. Every single day our body is interacting with its environment, with the different um, microbes in the environment, different temperatures, all the different things we're experiencing as well as on um, not just on that physical level but on an emotional and on a spiritual level we're interacting with people with our environment and that all affects us over time <laughs> so I think we need to look at considering all of that as well um, imbalances in any or all of those areas can make us unwell so we have a lot of different ways that we support but our goal is balance and supporting homeostasis there so which is always changing so just once you feel great that doesn't mean that doing exactly what you're doing for the rest of your life is going to make you keep feeling great we do need to adapt we need to adjust and we need to keep keep working so um, we need to rethink things sometimes about what we need and where we're at Definitely. And sometimes we need support in doing that sometimes we can realize it ourselves and sometimes we need support to talk to someone else and get that outside perspective um, and sometimes that knowledge of that other person to be able to help us through and get that balance again. Mm. So um, yeah. there is, and I might handball over to you, Esther, if you wanted to um, talk about the different, um, I guess, principles that we practice with naturopathy. There's a set of mm -hmm. principles we talk about and that we are guided by with our treatments that sometimes differentiates a little bit from other areas of of health and that side of things so okay over to you esther <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um yeah like jackie said definitely a strong belief in that not um not everyone is the same and, and can't be treated the same and and there's so many different aspects that affect our health mm. um and you know, and this is where sometimes the whole um, marketing of these miracle tablets can come into um, play here of like, this will cure this, this will fix this. But really as naturopaths, we look at you as an individual person, we look at what's going on in your life, what's going on in your, um, like your home situation, what are you eating, what's your lifestyle like, what is your spiritual practices? What are, where's your emotional health at and how these are interacting with you? Um, we might go into it a little bit later, but also looking at your constitution and, and different ways that your body is showing um, different signs um, in that sense as well. Um, 
so that's I guess where we're really unique is looking at you as an individual and and um, and treating you that way. And that's why our consultation process is longer um, because we really try and get really in depth um, insights into what's going on for you. Um, so coming into our naturopathic principles, um, first do no harm is our is the first one, and I think that's mm. quite across the board. You know, doctors and and things like that um, try and adhere to this as well. Um, but the second one is the healing power of nature. So we really believe that um, that there is so much um, richness in nature um, to be able to heal our bodies. And if you have studied plant, um, this, the science of plants, then your mind will just be so blown at how um, many constituents are involved in plants and how they work synergistically together um, to bring healing in your body. It's actually so fascinating um, and um, and there is so much in nature to be able to utilise. Um, but also within that is also that our body has the amazing capacity to heal itself as well if given the right tools. Um, and there's so many amazing documentaries out there that talk about this as well and people have so many um, unique stories um, but the power of the mind the power of um, of yeah thought um, and the power of rest and foods and plants and all of these things that can bring um, healing to our bodies um, and our body is always trying to heal itself and that's the beautiful thing I remember mm. reading a quote a few years ago of um, every time we eat, we have an opportunity to um, to give our body the tools it needs to heal or to bring disease. Um, and every time that we um, that we go about a day, that we eat, that we're stressed, that all these things are happening, our body is working hard to try and heal, and we just need to give it the tools that it needs. Um, and so the next one is identify and treat the cause. Um, and this is really, I guess, what sets us apart. We're not, we're not looking at just trying to treat your symptoms. Obviously, that's a goal along the way that your symptoms will reduce. And usually, you know, a lot of the times we see the, this happen quite quickly. For some people, it can take a bit longer. But we're looking at the underlying cause of what is actually causing that. Um, and one of the one of the key questions that i ask my patients all the time is was there something significant in your life that happened at the time that your symptoms started and i would say oh at least 80 percent of the time there there is something that's going on whether it's in their life um something emotional going on something spiritual something a physical move to a different place or um whatever it might be. And, and so when we're looking at the cause, we're actually looking at so many different aspects, not just, okay, there's something going on with your blood pressure. Okay, it's, you know, your heart or is the valve going on or something like that. But we're actually looking at other aspects of what's going on underneath. And we're trying to treat the root cause of what that is so that you can have long lasting health into the future and not just have temporary symptom relief. Um, and that's really our goal. Um, and sometimes, like I said, this happens quickly and other times this is a process, um, step by step and um, a little bit of trial and error sometimes as well because everybody responds differently. Sometimes um, it even surprises us. It's quicker than we expect with the healing yes. <laughs> because the body can be so amazing. So. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt. No, that. that's great. I was actually <laughs> saying to Jackie today, one of my patients, um, she's had... Um, sinus issues her whole life and she's tried so many over-the-counter things and um, all these different things and she's in her 60s now and never had any relief and um, I started her on one particular supplement and she has no no sinus issues anymore after just that one supplement and I said to Jackie I even surprised myself how quickly that that worked and but this is the key thing and for her I could see that there was um there was excess histamines in her body. So we did a process of clearing out those histamines and her symptoms reduced. Um, and so um, this is why at naturopaths, we're continually picking up little key things that people are saying through the consultation process to be like, okay, we can see there's a little bit going on here, making up a whole puzzle piece of what's going on for you. Um, yeah, which is super cool. Um, yeah, and it, we are like a puzzle, aren't we really, you know? You sort mm -hmm. of all these different pieces, and like like you say, you've treated somebody with something, and like that 
that piece of puzzle slipped in so quickly, you yes. know, whereas you're still trying to put the rest in and there's so many aspects to the body. And, and I mean, another thing is listening to the body as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, some people can get the message straight away and understand what's going on. And it's like, say, um, blood pressure. Well, I know I say to people, you know, they're taking blood pressure pills because um, obviously I try to do everything as natural mm. as possible. But, the, you know, other, yeah. pla other people have their place, um, but not my first choice. But, mm -hmm. well, you know, like they talk about their blood pressure pills and what have you. And they said, well, blood pressure, what's bubbling away under the surface? What has been going on for a long time that you haven't dealt with? You know, it's, it's like yeah. another aspect is the emotional isn't it, of, mm -hmm. of what's going on. And then... Yeah. And, and like you say you go back to well somebody said well my you know my partner walked out on me or or yeah. something made you really angry and they've not dealt with it and it's like really still woo -woo -woo yeah. under the surface isn't it absolutely yeah. and you're right some people do know almost know exactly what they need when they come in and they as you're unraveling and delving into it they're almost telling you what they need at times and we just you know tweak a few things that can make that difference from what they've already been trying other yeah. times it's just you know someone's lost or they're completely unaware of that something's happening could be affecting um their health in some yeah. sort of way as well so um yeah. it's always good to be able to help people see what's going yeah. on and it always makes so much sense to them as well which is yeah. helpful because if people can understand what's going on in their health and understand their body, they can yeah. manage the health. And that's what it's about. Back to mm. that continually mm. changing balance of homeostasis all the time is yeah. we all uh, want to, and well, we all want to, and should be able to help manage our health and keep mm. it on track as best we can. Yeah. Right. What, what, what do you find is the most, I mean, I know you do when you're, so if you run this through a consultation, do you do a take blood samples in the first consultation just to check, you know? So can you run us past what happens sure. there? Yeah, well, we do talk a lot in a consultation. We ask a lot of questions and that's a lot to start with because we do want to get to know you and we'll get to know your system. And sometimes there's a lot to get to know. Sometimes it's more brief depending on the age and where people have, how their lives have um, played out so far. Um, but after we've got a lot of information from people, we also use their body signs to tell us what's going on. So we want to see what their actual body is telling us. So that's where we have some other um, naturopathic tools, we call them, um, mm -hmm. that help us to see what might be happening. So we use a number of those sorts of things. Um, one thing we um, do is things like tongue analysis. Um, when we look at the tongue and that's something that can change quite often as what's happening um, that brings us back to some of our roots in the ancient medicine as well some of these things um, where we can get signs of dryness heat those sorts of things some of those more humoral type things back in Hippocratic type times the um, terminology that they used more so that's used in different um, forms of healthcare in different types of um, TCM, Aveda, those sorts of things mm. um, and practices mm. as well. So we do that sort of thing. Um, we can do small um, blood pricks and look at some cells under the screen to have a screening process that can give us an idea of the body needs. Yeah, so something like this picture so we can see the cells, the red blood cells and the white blood cells. And um, from that small idea there with training have had to see what they should look like we can get a bit of an idea um, if there's um, could be underlying inflammation happening in the system it only gives us so much information we have to use our other skills then to also be able to work out where is that where could that inflammation be what else could be contributing to this um, what else could be happening here yeah. to make that so and that's why we also continue to use then um other tools we look at nails as well um, to see the health nutritional health and um, of the body as well and even iris analysis I find is a big one back to what Esther was mentioning about we um, our different constitutions mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people who are 
have been around in the natural health industry or area for a little while or interested in natural health have probably heard of constitutions in some form of another. Um, they're very big at different levels in homeopathy, Aveda, different types of modalities there as well. Um, but we probably tend to look at the iris analysis a lot to get a constitutional type, which gives us an idea of what that body might be more prone to, um, what areas might be more overactive in the system, what areas might be more underactive, where strengths are, weaknesses, that sort of thing as well. So some of that can be inherited um, to the person and some of that can be um, lifestyle guided mm. or just part of that person's makeup mm. as well. That gives us a good idea of, again, like Esther was saying, we um, everyone needs to be treated differently because everybody is different. Um, having a look at someone's, getting an idea of someone's constitution lets us mm. know how we can approach and how to best get results mm. for them, what mm. they need. And that yep. can be very different. So, for instance, um, something simple, um, as I mentioned, say sinus before. And over the years of practice, just thinking about it, um, people have so many different causes and so many different reasons for having chronic sinusitis or sinus mm. infections or problems there as well. So some people can find resolution through um, herbal medicine and, again, different herbs for different things. <laughs> There is some people through nutritional support, looking at skin barrier healing and tissue support there. Other people dietary. So like you were mentioning, Andrina, with um, sometimes you'll eat something you know straight away from a sneeze or a feeling in your throat or a tickle or a cough that yeah. might not be in a true allergy to such, but something's not quite right <laughs> there with that food in your system there as well even though it might be a wonderfully healthy food yeah <laughs> so, and we also then need to narrow down is it the sourcing of the food things that might be on the food or is it the actual food and the the natural chemical components of that food that could be mm. creating a reaction mm. in the body and you've really got to look at the labels now aren't you in food because there's a lot of hidden um like i mentioned previously there's you know we know there's a lot of insects being brought in and under a different label which mm. which doesn't just say well that's that insect and that number is that insect it's like a broader picture of a job lot of whatever in something and and i know i've um because i'm a veggie um and i look at some of these plant-based foods and then when you look at all this fillers and starches and Oh, so many things, and it's it's like I don't think I want that, you know. <laughs> you you know, and I know there's little books you can get that tell you what everything, you know, like what emulsifiers mean or what a yep. certain number is. But you know, it's it's mm -hmm. like quite an education when you read a little. And you know, I I read a lot of labels now. I'm sort of you know like over here, rapeseed oil is in everything, and palm oil still, and it's like yeah you know but yeah anyway so, so what yeah. what what guidance could you give to people you know because like people get rashes on their skins or they've got um like um fungi toenails and things like that and <laughs> and they sort of let it go on and don't yeah. think it's anything until at some point it think these things get worse and but you know mm -hmm. and they're putting stuff on on the outside but not looking what's because it's coming from outside you know inside out yeah mm. that's right yeah. exactly it's that's needing the holistic and sometimes for a rash you might want a cream to soothe it or something like yeah. that it's yeah. itchy or dry but often the skin can represent things that are happening on the internal skin so what's happening on the inside especially often related to what's happening in the digestive tract or the digestive mm -hmm. system we tend yeah. to find um, there can be certainly other factors as well um, mm -hmm. things like stress it can be as simple sometimes as a contact reaction mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as well of something that someone hasn't picked up like you're saying with labels it might be a skincare mm -hmm. product or something that you might use the same one even but they've changed the ingredients and there's something in there that isn't agreeing with you so yeah. but 
there is quite a process to go through to really work out something, mm. especially like skin, because there's so many different angles that could be irritating it. <laughs> yeah. And it can be very overwhelming to try and do yourself as well at times, <laughs> um, especially when it comes, if you narrow it down to think, is it something I'm eating? It can be very overwhelming to think, well, what can I eat? Because I need nutrition. I need to get my macronutrients. I need my micronutrients. Mm -hmm. But what if I can't eat amines? What if I can't eat salicylates? What if it's the gluten? What if it's the dairy? You mm -hmm. can't stop eating everything all the time no. <laughs> to work out. Although sometimes an elimination diet can be very helpful, as I found, <laughs> um, as it, identifying problems there. Mm -hmm. um, it also can be very difficult to do in this day and age especially yeah. lots of things um yeah. being hidden and sometimes it can be harder to for some people who aren't used to always just having just fresh food as well so it's not yeah. always an easy thing to just adjust to in a quick yes. thing yes and i think like as well um another thing that we do often for people is is do tests for them so we can look at things like food intolerance we can actually do tests on their gut to look at their microbiome. Is there a, um, an overgrowth of bacteria? Is there candida in the gut? Um, all of those types of things. We can look at your urine, your hair. We can look at heavy metals, um, you know, your vitamins, nutrients, all of those things. We do quite comprehensive testing um, and very in-depth to kind of get an idea as well of what's going on. Um, so that's really great that we can do that sometimes because like Jackie said, doing something like an elimination diet can be really challenging, especially yeah. if it takes a long time. Whereas sometimes if we can test actually what what is showing up in your blood is, is that your body's not reacting well to it. Um, it can make things a little bit um, easier to be like, okay, I'm testing quite high for gluten. I do actually need to cut that out. Or um, it could be something random like um, tomato or, um, you know, um, so so that's another tool that we can do as well, uh, which is really helpful. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. How long is a consultation? Because, you know, like say I come in and, I, you know, I'm covered in a rash or something and, and then obviously you've got asked lots of questions you know to sort of fine tune a little bit what's going on in my life and and yeah. in, you know like what so how long do you, is your consultation for the first time yeah so our first consultation goes for about an hour um and um within that we try to do um all of the the examinations as much as we can that jackie had talked about as well as the questioning um, I usually do a lot of um, physical examinations as well. So I'm, I'll do stomach palpations. I'll do listen to your chest or do blood pressure, all of those things as well. Um, and uh, always try to stick within the hour, but it can often go longer. Um, but then we do try to encourage a follow up um, not too long afterwards, um, mm. which generally the follow up consultations go for around half an hour. Um, we don't have to dive into quite as much stuff, but we can check in and say, hey, how is this going? Um, how are you responding? Is anything new come up? So we do try to check in. And, and I guess that's um, that's one of the, um, one of the, I guess, naturopathic tools is that we try and really journey along with you. Um, that's one of our principles as doctor, as teacher. Um, and we really don't want to just give you some supplements and send you on your way and hope for the best, but we do want to journey with you on your health um, because sometimes it can take more than, um, you know, overnight to to treat what's going on. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, and that's a pretty intense hour in that initial consultation yeah. for people. Often people are pretty zonked by the end of it. We've asked them questions from long time ago and a lot about themselves and then we've given a lot of information about what their body is telling us as well at the end there and then usually given them a bit of a, an action plan to get started so it all happens pretty concisely for us we yeah. try to um, I guess both having been there and having come from personal journeys as well um, we know that you just want to get started <laughs> when you yeah. want to go and see someone you want to get yeah. onto it work out where to start from so yeah. Um, we like yeah. to have people moving with an action plan of how they can get started yeah. and then follow up, reassess, see how it's Absolutely. all going. Yeah, and you always lead with something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, you've, got, 
got a, some homework essentially when you leave yeah. <laughs> all the time. To get stuff. The fact that they've taken the step to come to you um, mm. is is like oh, step number one, and then obviously it's following the guidelines. And like for some people, like you've got to give up wheat, you've got to give up dairy, and and there's yeah. so many yeah. things. And then like you know, you take bread away, and people don't know what to eat. And then of course that includes biscuits yeah. and cakes, and <laughs> you know it's you know if you're really suffering then it's quite a lifestyle change to eliminate and i know um we buy ancient grains um yes. because like wheat bloats us out and all sorts of yeah. things so you know you yeah. just really need to be try to fine tune what you're eating all the time to what's triggering and like i said to you you know i can react with a sneeze straight away i might drink something different and next thing i'm sneezing about five times i think oh god what's in here that mm. my body doesn't like you know and yes. so it's you know it can be quite a lifestyle change and not everybody i think can, it can be quite a shock can't it what's going on in the body but it just depends yeah. how well you want to be to clear all, the, all what's bubbling away inside clear out your system you know because i know there's yeah. You know, you can have enemas and all sorts of things, but unless you take action to eliminate what's going on inside, then it's just like a circle and it's just going round and round. It is, Absolutely. yeah. And it's not very often that um, people will probably come to us with the very first sign of something in their nail. You know, usually people have thought, oh, I'll just try this. Oh, that didn't yeah. work. I'll just try this. Yeah. Oh, that didn't yeah. work. And, um, sometimes what they have tried, they might be on the right track. Um, like you said, for some dietary changes, but maybe not quite in the right combination or not for long mm. enough. So that's why we find that if people have tried a few things, if we can use some of that more functional pathology testing, it can help guide us and get them to the end result a bit quicker there. Where yeah. they want to be. So, and mm. also some people come as a last resort or near mm. last resort <laughs> as well. And that's yeah. quite common. And that might be a case of um, they've exhausted a lot of options but if we start to talk about things like okay we want to start to cleanse the body we want to start um, we want to start to do a detox to clear things out that can be very confronting for people as well um, mm -hmm. we're aware of so we like to be able to explain it break it down what does that involve and that's why we adjust it for everyone a little bit differently um, again, if you've been around um, natural medicine, natural health a bit, you might be familiar with your way or what you've done that's worked for you over time. But we like to break it down to what where people are at as well. Mm -hmm. So for some people, that might be um, one food change that we just look at for a month or for a few, few weeks. And that can make massive changes in a body. Yeah. Well, then we have to make sure everybody's keeping up with that supporting it so um on top of making that clean do they need to be moving more to stimulate lymphatic and get everything pumping through and get that moving and dealing with those changes yes. um, they need then to be we help them get better sleep so that during that sleep time their body can repair and restore as well during that time so we try to be very that's where the complexity and the address the causes comes in in a very layered yeah approach and often one step at a time as well yeah. so mm -hmm. if you're doing it yourself you might think oh i'll try this and yeah that cream helped clear that skin thing up fantastic and then it comes back another month later and mm -hmm. it takes a little bit longer for the cream to work this time from our point of view as naturopaths that would be suggesting there's something imbalanced we need to look at what this is <laughs> how can we look at rebalancing and getting this on track do we need to look at stress that's happening do we need to look at diet or dietary changes or the way that the body's processing what you're eating yeah so the digestive system and the way that's working as well mm -hmm. um also just oh it'll be right just put some more cream on it just keep going <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. i know um, yeah. i think um we were out or oh, I, I can't quite recall where in the last couple of weeks and i had to, and my stomach was gurgling away and I thought, oh my God, I mean, <laughs> I don't know quite what was going on, but all I could hear was, I thought, my, my stomach's not happy, very sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. 
and we are in it we do live in a toxic world you know we've got yeah you know patterns all over the sky well over here anyway more so being an island um and mm. then the water you know it's not you know pure water so i mean i've got a distiller and i you know i put mine through yeah. a system and then but then i have to make sure i got the right minerals to put that in as well so you know and you can taste the difference in the water um yeah. you know and there are there are drops and things you can add to your waters and all sorts but you know on, and i suppose the biggest thing because they say about your your um bowel your gut is your brain some people say it's your second brain and some people say it's your mm -hmm. first and yeah. <laughs> i think well it's funny because i think well i don't think of my brain being down there i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um what would you recommend to help people you know to have um like a good a good clear bowel movement you know because i know a lot of people suffer you know and again it could be diet or they're not letting go of things and you know yeah. the emotional. so yeah so it goes back to what guidance would you give to people to help their bodies um and then they can take go go and see somebody like yourselves if yeah if, you know, there's no not changing anything yeah yeah and i think oh you go <laughs> that's right you go for it um there's so many different factors that can be like you said causing those bowel issues you know like um looking at diet and those kinds of things is, is a part of it um another thing that often can cause us to have sluggish bowels is our liver actually mm. not detoxifying properly and we have three levels of detoxification in our liver and if if that if it's not cleansing properly if it's not getting rid of those toxins um we we can have that build up in our body as well and so often giving liver support is really important um and and i mean we can do this through many different ways through certain foods um that stimulate the liver thinking about bitter foods those things that um stimulate the liver um secretions to to break um to get rid of those toxins out of the liver we often use herbal medicine as well um and you know slippery elm is really trending at the moment um you've probably heard of it um yeah. it's a really good one um which often helps people with their bowels as well but it's really looking at not just you know getting getting your bowels to cleanse because a lot of the patients that we see you know are taking daily fiber and things like that then they're not necessarily natural fibers and things like that so we actually are trying to get to what is causing that sluggish bowel and like you said it can be emotional things as well um it can be not drinking enough water um not having enough minerals um there are so many things that can cause that and um and i think movement is a big one as well you know mm -hmm. we live in a in an environment where we're sitting down so often um and i don't know if you've ever experienced where you've gone for a big old walk and then you have a, a bowel motion afterwards and um, <laughs> so because your body is actually loving that it needs that movement and i think a lot of the time and, and you know hemorrhoids is a big thing as well and and um, and that often can come from sitting down for a long time as well and just having lots of pressure on that area um, and our bodies are made to move. So um, if you're having constipation, I would say get your body moving, drink more water, um, even adding a pinch of Celtic salt into your water can help mm -hmm. with the levels. Um, and look at your lifestyle. Do you notice that you're more constipated after you're eating certain foods? Um, and are you stressed do you feel like you're holding on to anything do you need to go outside and sit on the grass and do some deep breathing you know looking at all these aspects and see what is actually working um for me and what do i feel like is causing this um and yeah i would speak to a naturopath um or somebody that you trust uh in the health space to help you if you're not getting the results that you want mm. yeah and it's and not, sorry <laughs> well it's not an overnight like fix is it it's um uh i'll answer carol's question in a sec but it's not you know like I, again you can't go in the health shop and say i'll have 20 pounds worth of health and you fix that mm -hmm. and everything's hunky dory you know there's yeah. so many uh, you know layers and aspects yeah. to the body spiritual emotional physical that, you know it's yeah i don't want to use the word minefield but it's like a whole system in itself isn't it that 
like you know again it's a puzzle you know well we start doing the water and and like i've been doing like lemon in my water you know yeah. i sleep it might always got a glass by the bed and i've got lemon in the morning and then i i'll have a, a cup of hot water with a slice of lemon in and i've mm -hmm. taken i always used to love black or gray or lady gray and i could always see the tannin left in the cup and you know, I'd look at it and think about it. But anyway, I've taken myself off tea completely. Not that I drink that many a day. Um, mm. So I think, well, because obviously the tannin, you know, they used to use the tannin to color leather, didn't they? You know, and I was thinking, well, you know, if I go on drinking this, I wonder what color my insides are. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so the lemon would have been beneficial in there, as in coming back to like Esther was saying about the bitter properties, so having um, the water and the movement and the fibre from lots of um, plant foods, so plant food, vegetable fibres are very good. They yeah. work in a couple of ways because you're getting the actual fibre to help move everything through, but you're also getting the feeding of your microbes in the gut and in the balance, which their job is very important in digesting your food properly. So it is in the right yeah. form to pass through and to have a smoother bowel motion as well. So getting yeah. um, the variety and especially some raw vegetables in there, especially to get yeah. Yeah. the bitters, your bitter greens, your endives and your rocket and get some ginger into your diet, be it in tea mm -hmm. or in food or some sort of way there too. But the lemon, so the lemon in your tea would have been nice but, um, for a lot of systems. Um, but the lemon can be very beneficial. And the, the lemon is useful as well for the liver and helping with that stimulation of digestion and emulsifying the oils and fats and through the bile production. Yeah. So especially if you don't have a gallbladder or if your gallbladder is not working as effectively or as efficiently, um, then sometimes things like the lemon in the diet with the food can help as well as being aware not to eat too many oils and fats at one time because your body doesn't have a big store of that bile to help process it so what oils would you recommend people take because you know you've got three six nine and you've got hemp oil mm -hmm. and omega oil there's so many oils and i always think well you you need to make sure you've got oil in your diet because otherwise you know it's like a car if you don't put the oil in you seize up don't you so what <laughs> you know especially when you get to the later stages of life it's important that you you know you're taking your water your, your batteries topped up and, and all the things so um, yeah what would you what oils would you recommend um yeah i mean there's a lot of i mean there's so many great oils um obviously the ones that are high in omega-3s are really really important and i think there's a lot of controversy see around them that people often think oh if I'm having oil I'm going to get fat um but actually if we're having omega-3s that's actually um the research shows shows that it's actually supporting weight loss and supporting healthy weight and metabolism and so I mean you know um whenever you're going for an oil I would always encourage you to go for something that's cold pressed that's really um processed well extra virgin like extra virgin olive oil that's cold pressed is really great um and um you know i think also variety um so you know here at the clinic i've got a little bit of walnut oil and i'll sometimes drizzle that on my salad and sometimes i'll do olive oil and um and, and flaxseed is also another really great one um and there's there are a lot of oils in our foods as well like you think about chia seeds and nuts and things like that that we're eating they also contain a lot of oils um, so I don't think there's one that's like the best oil to take. I think it's moderation of, of um, sorry, not moderation, variety of oils are important, but obviously staying away from those saturated, highly processed oils and focusing mm. on more of the, um, yeah, the olives and the, um, the walnuts and the avocados and the black seeds and all of those kinds of oils um, that are doing much better things for your body. Mm. Mm. So, any other guidance or recommendations to uh because obviously you know that i suppose like detoxing for people um i'm not a great one for fasting like because i like my food and that, that's my choice <laughs> um but i keep thinking oh one of these days i'll just do a one day fast and i know friends have done like a week's fasting and all of that so um 
what was saying so like you know people some people have had to take different things for different reasons and it wasn't yeah. for their highest good um so what else would you recommend you know apart from seeing somebody just general guidance along the way um mm. to help people like you know obviously we've mentioned the oil obviously taking a slice of lemon in um warm water is good um any yeah. other suggestions <laughs> for general bowel health and keeping everything yeah up. yeah so yeah and generally like esther was saying mm -hmm. the movement as well so mm -hmm. whatever capacity that can be um yeah. for you as well mm -hmm. um that's something certainly good then probably some yeah. of the biggest things getting the fiber the lemon mm -hmm. um juices can be helpful in the right sense of if you can get some of those bitter foods into some of those juices and yep. stimulate so not just the slice of lemon but you can use um, different foods so um, mm -hmm. some good digestive juices that you can have mm -hmm. uh, things like celery carrot beetroot ginger a bit of a combo mm -hmm. of those with a bit of green apple in it as well yeah yeah. Um, with a nice digestive juice and that would stimulate a lot of enzymes in different parts of the digestive tract and might just help move things along but do remember to dilute your juice with water as well because it is very concentrated um, and it's sticking to something like that suggestion where there's more of the vegetable not just a fruit juice yeah. where it's going to be super highly concentrated in sugars you still get sugars from your vegetables um, mm. but not quite as highly concentrated in the fructose sugars there as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another thing that people often do is have a lot of water with their meals. And this is actually um, a bit of a no-no because what it does is it dilutes our stomach acid. Um, so if you're eating food and you're just drinking cups of water while you're doing it, this is actually not doing great things for our digestion. So um, I often recommend people, if they're going to have some water, just take little sips um, and and try and wait half an hour to an hour after you've had your meal to actually have a glass of water or, or have a drink of something um, so you can let your digestive system do, do the work. Um, another thing that's really great as well is um, things like teas, like simple teas, like Jackie mentioned ginger. There's also things like dandelion, which is amazing for the liver. It's also great for the gallbladder. I know we had a gallbladder question before. Um, and and also things like milk, thistle, tea. Um, you've got things like apple cider vinegar, which for some people um, sits really well and helps, and other people it's a little bit too harsh. So you've also got to be careful of that. Um, but uh, simple things, yeah, like having some ginger before your meals. Um, and often we use drops with our, um, we have herbal extracts that we use and we'll sometimes do some drops of ginger in a little bit of water before your meals to help to stimulate that digestion. Um, so there's plenty of things that you probably have at home. Um, if you're brave enough to go pick a dandelion plant and, and have some of that into your salad, just make sure you pick the right thing and don't poison yourself. Um, <laughs> but you can also put that in your salad and that bitterness will really get those um, digestion um, juices flowing. And um, yeah, bitters are super important for your digestion and your health. But also the guideline for optimal health is to eat 30 different plants a week. Um, 30. 30. And so this can be in the form of plants or herbs so anything that's kind of growing growing in the ground um and this actually is quite hard to achieve but the research is showing that if we are trying to have much more of a diverse range of vegetables and um, fruits and plants that our microbiome is is much happier and healthier and so that will keep us healthier into the long run um, and another fun fact is that you're supposed to chew your food 30 times before you swallow as well, which I don't know if you've tried to do that, but once you get to 30, there's pretty much no food left in your mouth. Um, and it's very challenging. I know I am not doing this myself, but I'm trying to be more conscious of how many times am I chewing my food. Um, so maybe start small, maybe start with 10 and then go up from there if you're not chewing your food a lot. Um, but this is where our food starts to break down in our mouth too, so that when it gets to the digestive tract, there's a lot of the work already done. And this then puts less pressure on our um, on our bowels and on all of our liver and our gallbladder and all of these other processes in the body as well. Um, yeah, so there's mm. some tips there as well. 
And looking at holistic health, the other thing with um, the bowels is sometimes our bowels will be sluggish or will change when we are holding on to a lot of things. Mm. So if we're either really busy or if we're feeling a bit stressed as well. So um, doing something like deep breathing exercises like you would to relax, relax muscles. Mm. They're involuntary muscle contractions that happen in the bowel. You don't actually have a lot of control over how much they're contracting like you can with an arm or a leg muscle. But if you can do some breathing and relax your system, it can help sometimes just to allow everything to let go a little bit more, especially if you're busy or you've got things on your mind or you are going through a stressful period in your life as well, which happens to most people from time to time. Mm. And um, along with that side of things, while we're talking bowels, as naturopaths, we do love to talk about bowels and guts mm. and digestion because it really is so important. It's where we put all our food and the information, a lot of information from our external environment goes in and is processed and helps to nourish and give information to what we want our bodies to do. Mm -hmm. um, I often use a bit of an old school analogy, um, which has changed a bit, of thinking of it like a computer. So if, we're, if you're typing along on a computer and you make a couple of little mistakes, a spell checker will fix it up. So if you put a few extra things in, your body will sort it out, it can handle it. But if you just start hitting the keyboard randomly, you're not going to get the results you want from your computer. If you're putting in all sorts of things that your body can't recognise and, and mm -hmm. doesn't understand what you're wanting it to do, essentially. It's a very simplified analogy, but it's a bit easier way to remember the, the simple, the fresh, and the natural things in our environment, and in our food especially, is the best thing for getting the results we want from our body, especially if we want it to be energetic and healthy and functioning yeah. and well for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but with bowels, you can work on training your bowel as well. So um, sometimes if people are very busy, and they might get an urge to move their bowels, they may not listen to that urge and may not be listening to their body. And over time, that can make a big difference as well. Um, so retraining your bowels, giving them a chance to go when you do need to go, or just yeah. giving them the option at the same time each day to go as well can be helpful. And that is through that nervous system link and um, with our bodies and that different levels of yeah. emotional and physical connection it can really yeah. make a difference in the bowels is one area that can really reflect that the skin and the bowels that's for sure yeah absolutely and even massaging your colon is really helpful too. Yeah. um so starting from the lower right side and massaging all the way up to the top of above your belly button all the way down to the left side um, and just giving that a really good massage um, can really help to move your bowels along as well. And, um, and castor oil packs are really great as well, if you've heard of those. You can yeah, I was going to yeah. say about castor oil, go on. Yeah, you can buy them online or um, or I don't have one, but if I've ever had any issues with my stomach or pain or things like that, I've just popped some on my tummy and um, just put some paper towel or, or, or a tea towel around there and just let it sit. Um, and that can be really helpful as well, not only for constipation, but like things like um, like period pain, um, any kind of, um, if you've got um, like, uh, like bowel disease or those kinds of things as well, um, Crohn's, those kinds of things can really help to soothe that as well. Right, um, Cloud Song is asking what, would you recommend food-wise for a brain neuron change? This is a there is a good reason why I ask. Okay, I'm curious about the reason. So, brain neuron change. Um, I guess I'm looking at things to make suggestions of things that can help with brain neuroplasticity. Um, might be what you're looking at, which is the adaptation of the neurons and how they can grow and change the directions mm -hmm. that they're moving. Um, so things that can help with that side of things from a food, again, probably looking at foods, things like your rosemaries, um, things like keeping inflammation at bay um, will help the body um, to have balance there. So things along particular pathways, rosemaries, turmerics, mm -hmm. um, those sorts of foods can be beneficial for healthy brain function um, and healthy neuron development and adjustment. 
not sure if that's answering the question, if there was a good reason why you were asking, but I hope it does help there. Other than it is important to provide um, just general balance, so things like proteins for repair and development in those neurons, getting your amino acid balance across the board. So if you are um, vegetarian, make sure that you are combining your proteins effectively to get um, to get the right balance and complete proteins of the amino acids mm. in each different source of food. Mm. Okay. Uh, since COVID, all my tastes have gone to being disgusting, in even water. Mm. <laughs> That's no fun because tasting food is a very good thing. It's a, a certainly a that we, we love to be able to enjoy and to have. So, um, yeah, so I'd look at keeping, especially, um, keeping inflammation at bay. So along the lines of keeping, you could try adding into your diet and in tea form, things like rosemaries, turmerics, um, those sorts of food sources um, might add some benefit there as well. It would be individualized. Sometimes there can be particular nutrients to do with taste receptors that might be deficient as well. So. Right, um, what to take for a COPD? another complex one <laughs> there as well so um for copd probably that's one i'd probably want to know more a bit more information about myself mm -hmm. i don't know Esther, you might have some other generalized suggestions but because it is quite a chronic um thing there as well um just keeping moving to an ability depending where your lung function is at as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things like um, uh, like heavy metals can also affect some of this to do with your breathing as well. Um, and so maybe looking at some liver detoxification, um, drawing out um, some of the heavy metals from your body as well. Um, sometimes, the, like I was mentioning before, the histamines, sometimes if they're high as well, they can cause more of that um, obstruction in the in the lungs. And, and I know recently there's at least in Brisbane, there's been a fair bit of um, respiratory virus going around and uh, a lot of people are having um, lung, lung, lingering lung symptoms. And um, so like Chucky said, look at the air quality, the air environment, look at um, really um, mindful breathing as much as you can in that process to um, get as much oxygen into your lungs as you can. Um, simple things like grounding outside with your bare feet can help to reduce that inflammation in your body and really help with that, um, but yeah, look at liver detoxification as well and, and reducing heavy metals and histamines from the body could be an aspect to that. Yeah. You could try for the lungs if there's a lot of um, heavy mucus that's there with the COPD as well. Sometimes a herbal tea combining things like thyme, ginger, mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of lemon if it's hard to lift the mucus as well can be beneficial and might help with some of the symptoms. Yeah, and the turmeric, like Jackie was mentioning before, the turmeric is really anti-inflammatory um, and the ginger and those things that are going to bring down that inflammation in the body. Mm. <laughs> sometimes like vitamin, D, vitamin D is really important too, like, um, you know, making sure you're getting enough sun, making sure you're getting enough vitamin D in foods. Um, and then, and then you know, as naturopaths, we've got a lot of tool, tools in our um, tool belt so we use a lot of nutritional things as well and herbal medicines to support this as well <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to share before we go today i, 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 do. I just I do. just one second yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was gonna no, say no. antibiotics because so many people are being given antibiotics and yet they do terrible damage they, they remove all the good guys don't they out the system and then you you've got to sort of build yourself up again and take probiotics and prebiotics yeah. and all sorts of things to build your gut back up so do you find that's a problem um people come to you with you know taking antibiotics but it's not really it's just done a quick effect on people but it's not really got it out of the system 
Sometimes we um, find that we can add a lot more support there, depending on what's happening, what the antibiotic is for. But for instance, we were just talking about respiratory things. So if someone has a cough and a chest infection and they're taking an antibiotic, or if they've had recurrent lots of them and they're needing lots, um, that's probably more likely when they will come to see us. But we often can provide extra support and that's what we love about our herbs and the synergy mm -hmm. and the different actions that they can have. Um, yeah. So not only is it about killing off the infection, but all the herbs and, uh, that we use can help to um, lift the mucus. So you're reducing your chances of secondary infection um, yeah. coming back again. They can also yeah. help with tonifying the tissue and helping mm -hmm. you to recover better yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's usually something that we'll individualise and there's not really a one-size-fits-all uh, formula. Yeah. It really is different for everybody. So I couldn't even give, other than the um, like a tea form, if you've got a bit of a cough, sometimes a bit of a thyme, ginger, lemon tea can be mm. helpful. But sometimes a herbal tea is not quite enough, but the tea can be very nice and it's a good place to start. Mm. Yeah. Right. And honestly, herbal medicine is so incredibly powerful. Um, so that like the extracts that we use are at a really high potency and that's why you have to be prescribed to them. You can't just go and buy them at the store. Um, but, um, you know, I, I like in the past, I had a lot of sickness, especially around the time that I had chronic fatigue and I was getting sick all the time, all winter. Um, but obviously I've built up my body a lot since then. But um, any time that I feel a sniffle coming on or I feel run down or I feel like I've got a fever coming on, if I take some herbs, um, I would say 95% of the time it doesn't come on. And um, and we have people often call us who are sick and they're like, can you please make me something? And we'll, we'll make a personalised herbal mixture um, depending on what symptoms they're experiencing and what's going on for them. Like Jackie was saying, if there's mucus, there's cough, if all of those things are going on. And so I would encourage people that if antibiotics is is quite a normal thing for you to take and it and it's um your kind of your go-to i would consider trying some other things um as well and and allow antibiotics to be for those times that you really need it um and and um and you know things like manuka honey is amazing as well mm. and so full of it's nature's um antibiotic really it does so many beautiful things for the body um and um, there's so many natural antibiotics that we can have through our food and through herbs. And so I would not always let antibiotics be your first port of call, but think about other ways. And it may take a day or two longer, and that's okay um, for the long-term benefit of, of actually building your immunity up rather than um, killing off a lot of those good bacteria that we have in the gut because then we need to go in and do work to rebuild them up, and that can be a process as well. We absolutely can build them back up if you've had antibiotics um, and we do that often with people. Um, but, yeah, it's always good if it's not your first port of call. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, yeah. over to Jeffrey. <laughs> hey, yeah, I've been listening to you girls and it's been a really um, fascinating subject. And, um, and I'm talking as a mere male here because it's uh, something that, you know, females are recognised as spending 70% of the household budget and that um, requires them to buy the food and medicines. For, for, and they're always, mothers are always watching their kids and making sure that they're all in a healthy state and they probably know more about their child than, than the, the medical world. My point by listening to your show as a mere male is that <clears throat> I'm hearing about the food and, and most of the food that you've been talking about is all from the vegetable world or the fruit world and to me it's actually mother's nature's medicine chest it's all got a high vibrancy that's um mm -hmm. and we're participating in the food chain with um a food that's basically alive if, if yeah. i'm going to make that statement as opposed to dead processed food with emulsors um and it's not really doing our cells any good so um and it was really interesting to hear about using the cold pressed juice, um, the ginger, the turmeric, the rosemary, the dandelion. I mean, um, they're all natural products that are available for people, including the herbs that people can have in their own garden. Um, yes. We've got so used to, the, I'm going to use the analogy of McDonald's drive through that as Andrina says, we want our 20 pounds going from the health shop to fix us up. Mm -hmm. 
when um, your car goes in for a, a roadworthy or over in, in the UK, it's an MOT, an annual MOT. So taking your physical body in for a check and, and naturally up coming to you girls um, mm. and just getting the once over gives people the opportunity to bring the body back into balance. And there's a key word that you said in the subject there tonight was um, the pH level and having um, the acid or the alkaline status on your gut. Um, do you want to share a bit more about the fact that, you know, food and well, we didn't even talk about sound because Andrea loves sound as a vibrational medicine. And of course, sound's being used to break up gallstones and kidney stones. But can you want to just elaborate a bit more on um, the vibrancy of, of nutritional food, you know, as part of a natural health solution? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we probably have both both have bits to share on this. Um, but you know, um, like you said, there's different energy from from foods as well, and um, and we often look at this. So a classic example is you know ginger versus peppermint. Um, both can do very similar things in the body, but both have very different um, energetic makeups. The ginger is very heating. Um, and the peppermint is very cooling. So depending on what's going on, one will be better for you than the other. And coming into the pH, I think we live in very acidic environments. Stress even causes acid in the body. Um, we have, we're exposed to chemicals and pesticides and all of these things all the time, which change our pH, our water, all of these things. And, um, and we're eating very acidic foods as well without really realizing it. So we're looking at the processed foods, we're looking at um, a lot of like high meat consumption, um, even some of our vegetables and things like that are quite acidic as well. And so what we look at is, is what alkaline foods can we bring into the diet? Um, a great one is spinach, actually. Adding a, adding a handful of spinach to your food can really help to alkalize it. Um, and, and, you know, things like lemons is, is a funny one because it's acidy, but it actually alkalizes in the body. Um, and so we're always looking at pH because it is a big issue. And even things like um, restless legs and um, reflux and these kinds of things can also um, be partly from an acidic environment. And, and as you probably know, a lot of disease can be birthed out of an acidic environment as well. And so we're always looking at how we can alkalize through our food, um, but also alongside that stress reduction, um, good sleep, good water, all of these things to reduce that. And that was something that we found, like Carol's put about acidic, you know, like some of the soaps are very acidic and the, and the body washes and things. Yeah. And you think it says natural, but they're not. When you look at the ingredients, you know, you really got to check your labels if you really want to fine tune you know what you're putting in from outside let alone inside eh? absolutely i know i used to get i well i've got a pack of um ph strips which i haven't done for a while so i'll have to do which i've done in the morning just to see you know what color is on the to see how i'm doing or whether i need to up more lemon or you know more green stuff that's always yeah. a good indicator isn't it yeah it does give you a good indication and it's also important to realize that there's different parts of the body that are naturally designed to be more acidic or more alkaline than other parts mm. as well so for instance we want good stomach acids when we want to break down and digest our foods and there's other parts of the body that we do want that acidity at the right times so yeah. using things like the lemon to encourage that acidity helps the food be broken down more efficiently which helps the breakdown products um, to balance the pH in the body as it's absorbed further down the digestive tract as well. Yeah. 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 It is to be educating yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And I want to just quickly mention um, something that you said before, Jeff, is like often, um, whether it's males or whether whoever it is, sometimes it's uh, you wait a long time until you get to that point. And, um, and I would encourage everybody that, one of, our, one of our naturopathic principles that we didn't touch on was prevention is better than cure. And don't wait until your body is having all of these big mm. signs to actually do something about it. But, but um, you know, yourself start researching, start making a few little changes. Maybe go and see a naturopath and, and say, hey, like I'm feeling okay, but I just want you to check 
me over and see what's going on. Is there some things that I can be doing differently or better to set me up for health into the future as well? Because once you get to that state where your body is showing these big signs, it, it does take longer and it you may not always get 100% healing um, if it's been going on for a long time. And so we want to be able to prevent that before you get to that stage as well and set you up for good health into the future. The, um you know, you, you see a lot of males from about 50 onwards and they all have their, they're all pregnant with their bare bellies is what you want to call it. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, those type of fellas actually end up coming in and seeing you. I mean, do they start looking at them, their health or, I mean, most guys will go to retirement at 65 and then within a short period of time, just kick the bucket, gone. Yeah. No, we do. We do see men, especially, um, well, not especially, but some men as they get older, some young men as well for a number of different things. But you mentioned in particular men who might have that beer belly as such and come in because they're thinking, oh, where's this come from? What's going on? Um, and there can be a number of reasons. And that can be as people, like you said, you use the example of 50 plus and we're looking at hormonal changes can happen around there. It's not yeah. the only thing. Obviously, we need to look at everything. Um, but our bodies do change. Our bodies do go through different phases and different seasons, and they do change. And that's part of what we do need to adapt and adjust as the, our bodies are going through these different phases mm -hmm. so that they can stay as healthy as possible. It's part of the natural cycle of our Yeah, that's what I was on before. Females more um more open to go and see about their health and, and males in terms of men's yeah. health we, we, men are not really we probably the, um, see more females but we do actually see a few males which is really great and that's really encouraging to see that um some mm -hmm. are dragged along by females themselves um but some do come of their own accord because they want to feel better they want to heal up skin rashes they want their digestion to feel better they want to get rid of the sore tummies that they've constantly got or or they might want to look at what's happening with um changes in their body as they're getting older there as well so yeah we do see a few men and different many different ways that we can help them to get yeah. health and energy back yeah so when they have a muffler problem do you give them charcoal um, did, we, again it depends that is something that's thrown into the mix of consideration so depending on what's going on um, so we know yeah. that the charcoal does absorb, so it can be used for some at least relief at the time from the symptoms <laughs> there as well. Um, but yeah, just making sure that it is all balanced and that sometimes there's time limits on how long you want to use things for. Um, if things are very good at absorbing what's in the body, sometimes that can absorb different nutrients as well. And we want to make sure that the nutrients are available for the body to be able to use as well yeah yeah now in, in australia mm -hmm. the vegemite you know the little vegemite song and it's full of <laughs> vitamin b and having vegemite on toast or vegemite sandwiches um if you ask andrina when she first came to australia she was getting bitten all the time and she was just fresh meat for all the insects but <laughs> the Aussies who have been on vegemite as a kids they never got the the same results um but I was brought to my, my attention last Sunday that um, that's the wrong yeast that's in, um, in Vegemite. You need nutritional yeast. Um, it's almost like a cheesy type flavor. Is, yeah. What do you know about that particular product? Yeah, I know it's great to use. So if someone's trying to avoid dairy, you can use your nutritional yeast. It can add that um, cheesy, like you said, cheesy type flavor. Um, to different dishes and things like that. But it also does provide a lot of different nutrients, especially a lot of your B vitamins there yeah. as well. Yeah, so that, that so is a, lot a of good B's have it <laughs> generally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, very good. There's a question yeah. coming up. Have you tried the nutritional yeast? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what actually happened was um, it seemed to get stuck in your teeth and in your gums. Oh, a bit I don't mean, um, I didn't actually put it on any salads or anything. I just put my hand in there and just put it in the mouth to mm. put up its saliva, but it seemed to stick with, within the mouth. So um, it had a nice cheesy taste. I just had to get water yeah. and twirl it around and drink it. But yeah, it was quite yeah. nice. Actually, the flavour, I've seen it used with um, a 
to make your own dips and things instead of creamy based spinachy dips you can use the nutritional yeast in with spinach and different spices and herbs and that comes out quite nice as like a dip option as well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> do 100 okay. Okay. like some said do 100 sit-ups a day well if you've got a great a, a large <laughs> belly you can't do a sit-up <laughs> <laughs> or off with a few. And I think like Jackie was saying before, um, you know, often if there's a hormonal component, um, it can be very challenging to lose that weight because we see a lot of men and women who kind of get to that 50 plus um, age group and they're really struggling, especially with that um, fat around the belly and struggling to lose weight there. And a lot of the time this is hormonal. So men, um, sometimes we, we do testing on, on men as well as women on their hormones. And sometimes it's a lack of testosterone and um, an increase in estrogen that can, um, that can be a challenge for them. Even though they're working out every day, they're just not losing that belly fat or they've also got excess breast tissue and things like that that they don't want. And the same with women, um, there's a massive hormonal component to that menopausal weight gain a lot of the time as well. And so we work to balance those hormones um, so that you can effectively lose weight um, and be at a good weight. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right, was there, um, right, um, Moraline says, can you give example of natural probiotics? Um, mm -hmm. But I, talking about that, I was told to take Inulin. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it there. And it's mm -hmm. lovely. It's 100% it's natural fiber. I don't know any more about it, but it's really sweet. And I think, wow. And I looked, checked on the jar. I thought, well, what's in there that it tastes really nice? But um, okay. I don't know what your thoughts on that because I only came across it later. Yeah, Inulin mm -hmm. is a great prebiotic. So it gets a bit confusing. We can talk about prebiotics and probiotics. Mm -hmm. And so the inulin becomes like a food for your probiotics, essentially. So it's also a good fiber source there as yeah. well. So great yeah. for that bowel balance. Um, there yeah, is something good for children, wouldn't it? Because it tastes nice. It really it tastes can, nice. I yeah, and it. it can be naturally found in some different foods, so different herbs, chicory, and um, mm -hmm. so some different foods, even um, things like asparagus are a bit more rich in the inulin and some of the prebiotic type foods. So back yeah. to it again, if you try to get a variety of different vegetables and foods you can get some of these things but if you yeah. do need a bit more then it can help there are some yeah. people who might take inulin though and it might upset them because yes. some digestive yeah. systems don't do well at digesting the inulin yeah. in the um, yeah. way that it's fermented or can break yeah. down and ferment as a prebiotic in the system too in fact yeah. everybody is different <laughs> well, yeah. you just yeah. talked about it very so <laughs> I actually, every time I go through the supermarket, I, I clock off. I don't see it. And now you bought it. I'm probably going to find it now. It's just like, yeah, can, yeah. You, know, you drive along, and all of a sudden you have a, a Rav Four, and all of a sudden every car's a Rav Four. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> what's yeah. the benefit of asparagus? Then? Sorry. What's, what's the benefits of asparagus? Um, I think that a lot for um, digestive health is one of the things I think of it most because it is a good source of those prebiotic fibers. Um, is there any other main things you use it with, Esther? Or? Oh, gosh, you got you stumped me on this one. Um, <laughs> it's hard to remember all the nutrients of all the foods yeah. off the top of your head. Mm. Um, I can't I'll remember. What about radishes? And radishes. Again, that nice bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. great for the liver um, and the gallbladder. Um, yeah. I, I often use it for that bitter component, really. Yeah. And... Um, my love for chocolate so the dark chocolate that you get from aldi stores it was... yeah it's good anything above 70 percent, i reckon um is okay. is the best because it's um lower in sugar and you're getting more of that um cacao um try and get as much of a natural chocolate as you can but chocolate's great it's also a really good source of iron um as well and um yeah we're not against chocolate for sure just getting a good quality getting a good quality chocolate um, <laughs> but I probably coming back to that question on um, probiotic foods as well um, so like Jackie said there's prebiotics and there's probiotics and I think a lot of the time people don't know what the difference is for that and the probiotics are putting the good bacteria into the gut and the prebiotics are feeding the good bacteria 
And so as we eat, as we put the good bacteria in, we also want to feed it so that it keeps growing and multiplying and staying healthy in our gut. Um, and so um, and so those things like the inulin is a prebiotic, but a lot of people do have upset with inulin. We often use something called um, partially hydrolyzed guar gum, it's called PHGG. And we notice a lot, lot um, more people don't have issues with that. It's a prebiotic. But then probiotics, you think about things like obviously your good quality yogurts. Um, and if you're dairy free, going for um, the dairy free yogurts, um, your um, sauerkrauts and any of your fermented foods are really great probiotics. Um, what else, Jackie? Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, fermented foods and kefirs and things yeah. like that are probably the probiotic sources because you've got those fermented bacteria. Um, you can make your own yogurts and kefirs and things like that if you mm. wanted to to um, not have extra added things. Again, coming back to labels um, yeah. because people do want probiotic foods. Sometimes there'll be probiotics added, but there can also be other things. Often you need to add a little bit of sugar to feed and to ferment to create those products or some sort of a food source for the bacteria there. So there might be a little bit, um, but you can make your own as well and you can make your own fermented vegetables, um, not just the sauerkraut, but a lot of different vegetables or you can get them as well. Yeah. So they're probably the main sources of probiotic foods. Yeah, and something you can also do is if you have any of uh, any probiotic capsules at home that you've got in your fridge or something, um, open up a capsule and tip it into your yogurt and give it a stir because this again helps to grow that um, the probiotics to to become even more in that yogurt. Where sometimes there's they're not as high as we think they will be. Um, so that's a little hot tip that I often do. <laughs> um, right. Young, shame youngsters aren't educated more as we throw away a lot of foods that are good for us, chopping the tops off different foods. For example, pineapple tops, blend it all. It's all anti-cancerous. And broccoli stems. <laughs> broccoli stems are good. That's another one. Yeah. We should include all of the food, the whole food. In yeah, because people place. chop the you know the bit at the yeah. bottom and you yeah. use the top bit, but the bottom is just, you know, you can put that in a soup mixer or or something yes. like that yeah. or cook it a little bit longer put it in a bit sooner and cook it a little bit longer to break it yeah. down yeah. yeah and even like um the the cauliflower and the broccoli um the little leaves that are on it you can steam these up and they're they're quite bitter as well so they've got that really great um great digestive component when you're eating your food um so that's another thing you can steam that alongside what else is going on and it's a nice little extra Mm -hmm. he, um, I went to um, the Chinese New Year on Saturday for the, the girls know the place and Andrea knows but people from overseas wouldn't know but we've got this massive um, Buddhist temple here not all that far from us and I went on Saturday and I went to a tea meditation ceremony and um, it was really quite fascinating because um, the lady had four different teas on offer Lulong, red tea, I've never heard of red tea before um, green tea and high mountain tea and high mountain tea come from the mountains in Taiwan anyway um, so I, I said can I have the high mountain tea anyway part of the whole process was um, they have a little teapot and they um, put in the uh, it's like a cracked pepper and they put it in there and then they put the hot water in it and they've got a clock 55 seconds would you believe and then wow. they pour it and pour it out of the teapot and they put it in a, a tea jug yeah. yeah and then they're going to pour it anyway so the thing is that you, you you hold the little cup like that it hasn't got a handle so you can put your little pinky yeah. up you know, right? <laughs> so, but they ask you to put your hand like this and so you drink and a one is the the um protocols of you know don't show people you're drinking through your mouth but it's the nice aroma that when you go like that, it acts yeah. like a little thing and you, you can then um, breathe in the actual aroma through yeah. your nostrils. It was really like interesting little yeah. tea ceremony to learn about um, an aspect of, of having a high nutritional tea. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, teas are amazing. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> it's on this weekend as well. So the Chinese New Year carries on down the radio. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, it's beautiful watching the ceremonies. I, I I had one once, a Chinese tea ceremony, and it was so beautiful. I love how they often pour it over the cups as well to heat up the cup and then such yeah, a beautiful that's right. process. And the therapeutic teas, I think, are underestimated. Um, you know, there's there's um a lot that a, cu a good cup of tea can fix, I reckon. Um, and it's not going to give you a super high, you know, dose of something. Um, but often it's just it's that gentle enough approach that it's going to help. And um, you know, we see we often see this with young children and things like that too, because it's a lower dose, and we can use teas, um, certain types of teas and things for children as well as adults um, to help to bring calming, help with their teething, all of those sorts of things as well. Um, without having, we're in our um, herbal extracts there, a lot of the time um, distilled in alcohol and sometimes people can't have that alcohol and, and we have them in different things as well, juices and glycerin and those kinds of things. But teas are a great, um, a great thing for those people, um, especially if you've got things like eczema and really reactive skin, sometimes having tea versus an alcohol tincture can um, be a lot better for the body because it's not responding super well to the alcohol and things. Well, we're blessed in Glastonbury. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We've got a couple of health shops where we get, and I, I bought, um, I've been by, I've been drinking rubosh because I've given up tea, and I absolutely love it. So that's yeah. that's nice. And I bought dandelion um, right. roots and some. I forgot I've got all sorts out there, and I got my little teapot, so I, I let it brew. But we had dandelion tea the other night, and we have to simmer it for ten minutes. Um, yeah. Like, but oh it was really delicious i really enjoyed it yeah, so, was it the roasted dandelion that has a bit of a coffee like taste no it's just, no. It just just ordinary dandelion but it was lovely so i thought i'd yeah, get some more to pick up because mm. you can also oh, I I forgot to tell you, the 50 yeah. the 50 seconds was to allow those um that high mountain tea to crack open but yeah, well, yeah. what you told me that if you carried on it would then um cook itself to the point that it'll lose all its flavor and becomes quite mm. a thick tea. Oh, and I didn't realize that was how important what, um, an aspect of um, drinking that type of tea. Yeah. Hey, then, um, I wonder if the drinking with your hand over the top might have been to help hold so that you were also getting some of the volatile oils from the plant as well. Sometimes that can be the case. Some teas are best brewed with a lid on top to keep all the active ingredients so they don't escape in the steam. So I think there's another say, and I can't remember, but I remember reading somewhere saying, when you drink your cup, always drink with, with your hands like that, you know, yeah. or around the cup. And I can't remember the reasons why, but it was sort of, yeah, it was recommended that yeah. you always hold your cup like that. Yeah, and like Jackie was saying, like, you know, for example, peppermint, you know, you want to try and keep the lid on when you're brewing peppermint tea because of those beautiful essential oils that are in in the um, in the peppermint actually do really beautiful things for your gut sometimes as well, mm. reducing bloating, all of those things. And if you let it all come out into the air, then you're missing a lot of that benefit. Oh, yeah. A bit yeah. like uh, Crocodile Dundee when he in, in New York and the guy's snorting coke and he says, here, mate, do this. And he gets the hot water and puts it in the pot there and puts a tea towel over and breathe it in, mate. <laughs> that gets rid of the sinuses. Um, listen, um, I just had a funny feeling here that um, we've got so much knowledge being shared and um, people will be able to watch the show later on through the Facebook pages and the YouTube channels. But... Um, I'm going to give people a clue that if they go onto the Facebook pages, um, yeah. say they go onto Radio FM 88 Australia or Dreaming the New Dream or Andrina Forest Facebook pages, and um, they go to the site, <coughs> which would just you know, will come up, and just click onto the, the page and click the right button, and it says copy link. All right. Now, when you do the copy link, then open up the browser and go to this particular page. And then put that link into the um, into the thing that says download, and then click download, and then you can then save it onto your download uh, and your own computer on your hard drive. In other words, what I'm saying to you is, keep the show on your own computer that you can then use as a backstory, because um, there is a potential there that um, we get the fun police who think that um, 
it's not in the interest of um, humanity to have this knowledge. So um, mm -hmm. let's get the knowledge out there. Yeah. Anyway, Andrea, yeah. back to you. No, that's mm -hmm. it. So that's been um, lovely, girls. Thank you very much for sharing and all what you're doing. And you know, this you know you learn something each time, and we pick up little tips. And you yeah. know, it's all helping everybody. Um, yeah, loose tea is better because bags are made partially with plastic, and I've heard that. So, uh, yeah, anyway. some of them are, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's we, love, we love working with people of all ages and all, you know, um, different lifestyles, and we do in person and telehealth consults as well. So, if you're not if you're not local to us, you can also book an appointment with us as well. Um, but if you're interested in, in working alongside us, we'd absolutely love that as well. So you can just head to our website. I know the link was up there, oliahealth.com.au, and um, find out more of the information on there as well. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies. It's been absolutely a pleasure to have you on the show. And you're both glowing with radiant health. So obviously what you're doing suits you. So thank you once again. And um, it's been an absolute delight. So and thank you everybody for listening in and for your questions um and you can contact the girls if you want to know anything else and otherwise same time same place next week thank you thank you for having us <laughs> that's very good that's what life's all about isn't it? it's about sharing the knowledge yes absolutely <laughs>